ScaleModelPlans.com has been offering scaled plans online for over seven years, and we now have over 75 plans in various scales, from N scale to garden scale. You can also use your plans to build Z, S, and TT scale structures. We come from a background in architectural design, construction, graphic design, and more importantly, model railroading. One of our main purposes is to promote scratch building and to share in the successes and accomplishments of fellow model builders and diorama artists. We welcome emails, photos, and helpful hints from our friends and customers. This video is our way of welcoming newcomers to the hobby and the accompanying free download is our way of thanking our previous customers in over 40 countries around the world for their support and encouragement. A plan package from ScaleModelPlans.com can contain anywhere from 30 to over 100 pages depending on the scale and complexity of the structure and starts with the table of contents which helps you decide which method of construction you want to use and which pages you would like to print. If you don't have a printer you can take the dimensions from the scale plans directly from the computer. Copyright and licensing information. This is very important. You are licensed to make as many models as you want for your own personal use but not for sharing or distribution. A 12-page generic construction guide. This guide provides strategies and procedures for scratch building in general and is not specific to any one plan. If a particular plan has any unusual or specific features, suggestions are often included within the scale plan sheets themselves. A 10-page cardstock guide. This guide is also generic in nature and covers common techniques to construct the cardstock version of the model. Scaled plan set. For the purist model builder, this plan set is similar to a basic set of house plans, with the dimensions and features required to scratch build a model from your choice of materials. You can use scaled lumber, balsa, styrene, or foam board. The drawings are the actual size of the finished model, so any dimensions not included can be taken directly from the printed sheets. Traceable Templates This is what really makes the model building process simpler. These templates can be cut out and traced directly onto your choice of building materials. No measuring or calculations are necessary. This is extremely handy when building complex roof systems. Lastly, the colored sheets are intended to be printed out on cardstock or matte photo paper, depending on the scale, to construct a cardstock version of the model. This is by far the most inexpensive method of model building, although some people construct both the cardstock version as well as wood or styrene versions of the same structure. This is a relatively cost-effective way to populate a model railroad layout, particularly when you experiment with various materials. Plans 730 and 1466 on the website are a good example of this. Read through the construction guide that comes with a plan set. There are a few procedures that are not covered in this video. There are also online tutorials on scratch building and cardstock construction on our website. Be sure to check them out. Balsa is probably one of the most common hobby materials available, and it's probably the easiest to work with. It can easily be cut with a razor saw or knife, the drawback is that it's porous and less dense than other woods, so it's more susceptible to flaws and damage, including splitting. Basewood has a tighter grain, denser and stronger than balsa. Basewood can also be cut with a knife, but it takes more effort. Northeastern scale lumber uses basewood in a variety of profiles for model building in most of the common scales. Their clapboard siding is available from 1 32nd all the way up to half inch, suitable for dollhouse scale. These various sizes are not scale specific, but can be used to achieve a variety of effects. For example, if using 3 64th inch northeastern scale lumber clapboard siding, 3 64th in N scale would work out to 7.5 inch lap siding in real life. 3 64th in HO scale would work out to 4 inch lap siding and 3 64ths in OO scale would resemble 3.5 inch lap siding. Northeastern also makes a few vertical siding profiles as well. Some of them are designed to be used for modeling boxcars or other rolling stock, but I have used them for industrial siding projects as well, and when painted the right colors will resemble metal siding. Styrene sheets are available in various textures and scales and have the advantage over wood in that it doesn't split. 
It can also be cut with a knife or razor saw. Another versatile material is wood veneer, which is available at hobby stores and some building supply stores. It's available in a few thicknesses, but is usually quite thin. It can come in handy for making doors out of windows, decorative trim, and other effects. I've used this material for my handmade cedar shakes. You can find that tutorial on our website. We'll be using 1 16th inch clapboard siding from Northeastern Scale Lumber to do the HO scale version of this model. This will provide the effect of 1x6 horizontal siding. Another decision we'll have to make is the type of corner treatment we'll use for the walls. The simplest joint type is the butt joint, where one wall butts up against the inside face of the adjoining wall. The drawback of this is that cross-section grain of one wall will be exposed, and it's not a natural look. A common but more difficult joint to construct is a 45 degree bevel. It can look quite realistic if carefully done. There will be a more detailed demonstration of this in an upcoming video on foam core construction. Plan 576, the two-car garage, indicates vertical corner boards on the original prototype structure. In actual construction, corner boards were often 1x4 or 1x6 vertical boards used to cover up the exposed ends of the horizontal siding, and it gave the structure a nice finished look and could easily be painted in an accent color. In the case of scale modeling, they are actually easier to make than a bevel joint corner at the same time adding more realism to the finished project. So it actually looks more difficult than it is. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the traceable templates. They can be cut out with a hobby knife and straight edge or a pair of scissors and a steady hand. If using the corner board technique, you'll need to trim off where indicated in red on each of the wall panels. Roughly lay out the templates onto the material to get a general idea how much material you'll need and where to start cutting. Keep in mind the direction or slope of the bevel siding. This can sometimes be difficult to see, but it will probably show up in the finished project if you get it wrong. Use a magnifying glass if needed, or you can run your fingernail along the face. You should feel a catch when going from bottom up, like a ratchet. The end walls are obvious, but draw an up arrow on the back sides of the side walls to indicate the top of the walls so that you get the siding direction right when assembling the walls. You can use either a sharp hobby knife or a razor saw to cut either basewood or styrene. Just a reminder, this plan will work equally well with styrene, basewood, or foam core. 